Hello folks, this is Joe from My Geeks, and I'm here at the Michigan Renaissance Festival with Clark of the Dead Bob Show. Clark, how are you doing, sir? I'm all right. How are you? Oh, why do you got to put this on me? Hi, geeks. <laughs> I'm not, not too bad, actually. I'm um, more of a nerd than a geek. I'm so not sure what the difference is. Well, are you more into the sciences and stuff? Yeah. Well, then you would... I, the, geeks, now, you know, the original term for geeks was like guys that used to swallow lizards and poke holes in their faces. Well, of course, of course. But it's obviously morphed over time. Yeah. I mean, geeks for me nowadays is just like... Techies, right? Well, no, not necessarily techies. Like pop culture stuff, like comic oh. books, video games, anime. Nerds are more into the sciences, but there's massive crossover depending on what you like. Well, like I mentioned, you are of the Dead Bob Show. In fact, you are the creator of the Dead Bob Show. Is that correct? I am. Uh, I came up with the whole concept about 27, 28 years ago. We were doing, a, if actually if you stay till 6 o'clock on this stage, we're doing the really bad timing and rotten luck of Romeo and Juliet, <laughs> which is what I started doing at Renaissance Fairs. Uh, the first Renaissance Fair I ever went to, we were doing, uh, I was working with a Shakespeare company in Atlanta. And we were doing a Pyramus and Thisbe from Midsummer Night's Dream. Was and that a three-hour show? No, 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 no. Okay. No, this was, uh, the, I don't know if you know the Midsummer Night's Dream, but there's a play within the play. And it's a bunch of kind of bumpkins trying to do classical, tragic theater. And they're just so bad that it's funny. Okay. So we thought, well, what if that group went after Hamlet? Or what if they went after Macbeth or any of the other tragedies? And so that's what we started doing. We did... Uh, a 20 minute, 25 minute version of Hamlet and uh, Pyramus and Thisbe. And then the next year I started writing the parodies. I wrote one for Macbeth and then uh, Caesar, Romeo and Juliet, King Lear. And we found, discovered that uh, over and over again we needed an extra body or uh, like often a dead body. <laughs> so the very first year we had a pair of pants and a shirt that were stuffed with rags and had kind of this mask thing working wired to the top of it and it rained one day and it got all wet and it basically just fell apart because it was just pinned together so the next year I built a skeleton out of bamboo and wired it all together and it was a little more durable and that eventually became Bob okay well let's talk about the show actually I mean you're a comedic show right I started out doing lanes just walking around the, in the street just kind of people said I was an insult comic but it was like you know more of a just playing with people in the street. Uh, and then I realized pretty quickly that uh, anybody who was making any money was doing the stage show. So uh, I, was, uh, I got hired to do Colorado just to walk the lanes and stuff with Bob. And uh, I kind of started paying attention to all the other stage shows and kind of pieced together an idea. I thought, well, I need kind of a variety show. So we have a song, we have a... a a play that, that the, act, the people from the audience act out. And, uh, and so I got a chance to try it. I was doing the Maryland Festival. And this uh, one of the acts, uh, he only had one show a day. Uh, he was a mime named O, and he broke his ankle. And so his stage slot at the end of the day came open. And uh, the director of the company had heard that I was uh, working on a stage show. So she asked me, do you want to try it out? So I did, and it was, um, this was like at the very end of the run. So I'd already made a uh, kind of impression just walking around with Bob, because it's kind of a sight gag. And, uh, and so almost everybody that came to the show, the first one that I very, did was all people that were participants at the fair. And they were pretty much all rooting for me, so I really could do no wrong. And it, the show really hasn't changed much in 27 years it's you know it's i've changed little bits and pieces of it but it's do you find creative freedom behind the persona oh yeah uh generally speaking i can pretty much do whatever i want <laughs> now, you know they occasionally people get upset at anachronisms and stuff and i try not to get too modernistic although i just ran for president but uh but generally speaking the most of the fairs just let you go have you had any spinal tap moments on stage where I forgot where I was. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. It's a favorite movie, by the way, or one of the favorites. Oh, okay. Um, I just think those guys are brilliant. Uh, Do you turn it up to eleven? Uh, yeah, of course. If it'll go that high, I have a thirteen on one of mine. Oh my goodness! Yeah, that's unheard of. So, uh, where was it? Um, 
I think I lost. <laughs> no, I was asking about Spinal Tap moments oh, and oh. stuff. Like just screwing up, lots of screw ups where I've forgotten. Like, um, I guess I am. Yeah, we're backstage right now, folks, if you hear that in the mics. Yeah, there's all the stuff going on up front. So um, there's definitely times when I've just lost my place. I forgot what I was doing. And uh, there's been a couple of times when I just stood there, like, for a good 30 <laughs> seconds. And that's forever on stage. Oh, I can imagine. When you don't have anything to say. But most of the time, I mean, it's, right now, it's, it's all ingrained. I mean, even if I just kind of forget with my head, it's, this sense memory kind of takes over. Okay. So. Well, um, to delve into you a little bit as a person, uh, the, the person behind Bob, what was your first exposure to the Ren Faire scene? Not as a performer, but just... Well, that was it. I, the first show I ever went to, I went as a performer with oh, the okay. Shakespeare troupe. Okay. So I'd never been to a fair before, and that was actually the second year of the Atlanta show. So the, the festivals had been going on for probably about 10 years by that time, but they really hadn't spread across the country until right around then. The very first one was in, uh, uh, in California, and then uh, the next major one was Minnesota. And then the Minnesota one was pretty amazing. There's, it kind of spread out for the rest of the country from the Minnesota. They were really professional in Minnesota, and they, had, uh, they were hiring pretty amazing acts. Uh, Penn and Teller okay. started uh, Harold Anderson. I don't know if you remember him from Night Court. Remember that show, Night Court? That's this wasn't Bull, was it? Uh, Bull was in it, okay. but Harry, Harry Anderson was the, the main character. He was the judge. Okay, okay. It's like Night not Court. Anyway, he, he did the, uh, there's the Karamazovs, did uh, Minnesota. Anyway, from that show, the Minnesota show, all of a sudden, they spread all over. There was one went to, to Ohio, uh, one in Georgia, a couple uh, more in California, and just all over the country after that, so... That was, a, that was a really influential show, is the Minnesota show. Okay, and since your show is uh, predominantly comedy, well, it's all comedy, actually. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I enjoyed your show last year when I first saw you, and that's what sparked uh, the idea to do an interview with you. And, you know, I was th I'm very fortunate enough that you granted this, so thank you so much for that. But who are your comedic influences? Oh, gosh. Well, of course, in the beginning, it was, uh, I think, probably the, the Smothers Brothers. Um, uh, Bill Cosby, of course, uh, who, was, who knew that he was going to go with the way he did. Yeah, before all that, you yeah, know. Uh, before I mean. his fall from grace. Boy, what a fall. Then, um, uh, said. Gallagher? No. Blonde, tall. I can't believe <laughs> I can't I was name. like, this isn't Carrot Top, is this? No, it's, uh, oh, God. Anyway, I think you know what I'm talking about, uh. Uh, and then Bill Hicks, of course. Uh, Bill Hicks was probably, of course, you know, it's such a completely different animal than most of the stuff you'll see out here. But uh, very intelligent his political stuff. Uh, and it was so funny because you could take everything that he was saying back during Bush one and almost update it 10 years to Bush two. And it all fit almost exactly. Well, I mean, I wonder what he'd be like today if he went and passed away from cancer. Yeah. You have a favorite album by him or a favorite bit? Uh, I like the Gideon's bit. Uh, yeah, the Gideon Bible one. That's, uh, <laughs> God, there's just so much. This, when he talks about uh, the miracles of having birth, that whole thing, about the gym sock and all that. Yes, oh, I know <laughs> I exactly what you're talking about. Whole civilizations. Yeah, shot into his gym sock. Yeah, yes. I, I've done that myself. I've, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, I've enjoyed his bit on uh, The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. I don't know if I saw that one. No, when it, it was I know that he got kicked off of, uh, or he, he got David he, Letterman. Well, he didn't get kicked off. They just kind of dropped his section, saying that it was too uh, controversial about the well, cross thing. Well, the rant on e, uh, an E minor album, he did a bit on Jay Leno selling out and doing a commercial on Doritos. Ah, uh, you know, so he he made fun of that. I know a, a thing I really liked by him was what he did on uh, people who do PR and commercials and stuff like. Uh, uh, just about how they basically sell their souls. Oh yes, except for Willie Nelson. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said he had to do it. Yes. But also, uh, from what I understand, another movie, uh, another comedic influence would be Woody Allen. Is that correct? Absolutely, Woody Allen movies. Uh, everything you also want to know about sex. But um, we're afraid to ask. Yeah. There's Sleeper. With, that's uh, a that's a good one Diane too. Diane Keaton. 
Well, I, my favorite part of that was when they found the BW in the cave and it started right up after I don't know how many years. I like the big to. silver orb. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, but when the, later on they found him and he was uh, on that couch and he had that huge one that was like in his lap. Uh, okay. I like the big tit that they corralled into the bra. Oh, from uh, everything you wanted to know about sex, we're afraid yeah. to ask. But um, but the Gene Wilder scene, may he rest in peace, with uh, the sheep when oh my God. he sat down and was listening to And the, when the guy first told him, he says, I'm in love with the sheep. And there was like a good 30 second watching his face go through all the different just thought processes about that. I think it's one of the most amazing takes I've ever seen on film. Yes, I mean. The big lost Gene Wilder. What a lovely, lovely man. And the thing is, so, I mean, he went out when he decided to. I'm not talking about passing away. I'm talking about just from the world of acting. And you yeah. never, ever heard any controversies with that dude. Well, he, I've heard, and I just heard this, that he had Alzheimer's. I didn't know that until just recently. Yeah, I watched. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what I heard. I watched a recent interview that he did, I think, in 2012, and he was talking about why he walked away. And it was, it was a nice... I want to say 20 minute interview that he was on stage. I would highly recommend checking that out if you have not. Well, as we're wrapping this up, where can people find you online, sir? Uh, deadbob.com and also Facebook, just deadbob, D E D. It's D E D because smudge can't spell. And uh, yeah, the Facebook and uh, the website is deadbob.com. You can get shirts and hats and, and uh, lots of photographs. And uh, the lyrics to all my songs is there. Oh, okay. And final question, what would you like to say to your fans throughout the years? Come back. Give me money. Fives and tens, preferably. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, this is Joe from A Geek Scene with Clark of the Dead Bob Show. Oh, oh, not the, oh, oh. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. Well, folks, take it easy. Ciao.